Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Muzzle Is Off podcast. Happy 2021 to everybody. This is really kind of like the official first show of the Muzzle Is Off podcast for 2021. Outside of my birthday show, After Dark, that was like After Dark's first show, but this is really the first uh, the Muzzle Is Off podcast show. So I want to say welcome. I hope y'all feeling all right. I hope these first 15 days of 2021 has been making y'all great thus far. Hope y'all ain't uh, reneged on your whatever resolutions you didn't try to make. I ain't reneged on nothing because I ain't making no resolution. How about that? But um, that's neither here nor there. Tonight, we got Quentin here with us. Hey, Quentin. What's going on? You know, living, trying to, you know what I'm saying? Trying to, <laughs> trying to do this thing. Fine. <laughs> And tonight we're going to be talking about um, a topic that I actually spoke about with Quentin on his podcast before. And I was like, you know what? We we said then we were going to do a part two. So this is kind of like a part two, but we're going to kind of bring y'all into part one a little bit because a lot of y'all didn't necessarily uh, get to hear part one. So we're talking about lockdown love, prison love, love behind bars. And um, it's I find that it is something that people really and truly just don't fully understand. Um, but it is something that people truly love to judge without full knowledge. And I find it to be very interesting um, to judge something that you have no knowledge of or to judge something that you literally uh, have never experienced. Right. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to really talk about lockdown love, love behind bars, prison love, all that good stuff. So I hope you all ready because y'all know. The muzzle is off, and I tell the truth and the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help all of us, okay? You, know, uh, you, gotta, you gotta tell them, be like, you know, like Jack Nicholas. You can't stand the truth. Listen here, I hope y'all can handle the the truth because I I don't I don't sugarcoat nothing. It is what it is. Um, I've experienced a lot in life, and this is one of the things that I have definitely experienced on a number of occasions, not just one time, not just two times, probably about four. I don't had about four experiences with uh with this whole lockdown love type thing. Before the TV show, there was no TV show when I was experienced. Let's get that straight. There was no TV show, there was no hype, there was no none. It was just life. It was just that's what it was. It was life. So let's get into it, Quentin. Yes, um, I experienced that as well numerous of times. And I think that, like you said, most people don't understand the dynamic behind it. Um, they just are judgmental and don't really get how could you, quote unquote, fall for someone 
that you're not physically with. Let's just look at it like that. I'm not physically with you. Why can't we fall in love, sort of say? Mm -hmm. So most people can't get with that, so it scares them. And I, so I say to myself, opposed to them looking at people like me and you who've, who've been through that, do you fall in love with someone that you don't know, that you're physically with? Um, that's my opposing question. And the reason why I say that is because me and you are both what I consider, uh, and they consider sapiosexual people. Mm -hmm. People who uh, the definition are attracted to intellect, attracted to great conversation, attracted to where our minds can take us. And that's one of the things that in, in, in me and your situation probably happened. Mm -hmm. you know, um, for me, I met somebody and it was just an awesome conversation. And it was just a vibe. It was a vibe that just went so somewhere. Let's, let's pause. How did you meet her? I knew her through a mutual friend. I knew her already. Mm -hmm. I knew her already. And um, how you doing? Just occasional, how you doing? Visit, how you doing? What's up? Eye contact. And then so it went knew, from there. You knew her before you were locked up? No. No. That's what I want to, because see, no. people don't, and there's different, there's different ways to enter no. into this. So you didn't know her before you were locked no. up? No. Okay. It's, 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 it's the no, and then it's the no of. Two situations. One was the no of, and one was the no. Okay. I'm speaking of the no of. The no of situation was, oh, I don't know you, but I know of you. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, it was a mutual, mutual, mutual friend, basically her brother, um, no brother. And it was like, oh, what's up? How she, you know? And one thing led to another where the phone number got exchanged. Mm -hmm. And the correspondence at, at my particular situation, it was, it was um I was able to call. Uh, not not to incriminate myself. I was able to call. Everybody in jail can't just pick up phones and call, but I was able to call. And um, that's really what it was. It was more of when every time Look, you call, out now, they can't give you a phone charge. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so every so every time I called, it was more of the connection. The connection, the, the mental, everything just I mean, it's hard. It's hard, maybe for the person that never been to, been through it, to really, really understand what I'm trying to convey. But when you have a, 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 a intellectual chemistry with somebody, you know, and you get it. You could just vibe with them. It's just something like we could talk about any and everything, situations. Um, she could vent to, for for a guy. She could vent to you about things that's going on in her world out there, and she could be in that particular part. She could be dealing with somebody, and you could just be the ear. You could be the friend, and you could just be you know giving. It could start off as just advice. My particular situation was you know I'm just listening. I'm the dumping ground, and I'm listening, listening, listening. And I think that's one of the things that most people don't realize is that it's a lot of people that are free, that are in relationships or, or, or perhaps in marriages that don't even have these type of conversations. Everything is more monotonous. Everything is more day to day. I'm going to work. You're going to work. We paying bills. We go out here and there and that's it. It's no quote unquote, as most people would say, excitement. It's no mental. It's no gymnastics. It's, as we would say, mental gymnastics going on. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing intriguing about that individual. It's nothing mysterious. Most people like that word mysterious, and most people like mystery. Like, damn, I really want to get to know him. He got a good mind. He know what to say. Like, I just get an energy. It's an energy, so to say. So, you know, and, you know, one thing led to another, and it was like, you know, you're about to come home soon. Yeah, you're coming home. All right. What I'm doing, I come home. I don't know. Well, you know, why don't we, you know, get together? So now it's like, okay, this is, this is going there. And when you're at a certain point, and I believe that most people 
of a certain age get to a point where it's no need to play games. If we're going to be together, we're going to be together. And you just go for what you know. You get married. Just go, just do it. And a person may be like, well, how could you make a lifetime commitment off of a short-term, uh, as, as I would say, a short-term you know, situation. It's not short term. You're getting to know somebody. Life is about getting to know you. You may be married to somebody 20, 30 years and you don't really know who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, so everything is a journey and meeting people and going places. So why not? If you got that partner who you have that chemistry with mentally, everything else is gravy. Physically should be gravy. Um, learning how to deal with each other as far as bills should be gravy. Once you have that other stuff down. So, you know, that's that's how it goes. That's how it really goes. Uh, the TV show, I haven't never watched the TV show. I might have watched a clip of it. And the clip of it is more of a, a drop, you know, a dramatization of what really happens. I don't think they talk about the, the, the connection enough. Because the connection of not physically being with them you know, it, it's a void. You know, a guy in jail, he really needs uh, moral support, mm -hmm. so to say. So that individual, the female, she comes in his life, and she's just listening to him. She's doing exactly for him what he's doing for her, just being that ear. Just being that ear, so, you know. That's about it, Nakia. I mean, you know. Quinn, we, we, Quinn experience was different from mine. <laughs> well, I know you 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 did tell me your experience. I mean, uh, shortly when we did the other show, and uh, you you don't you, was, don't, you don't, no don't no you me. you said you was going to uh you but see your your situation you explain your situation. It's your show. <laughs> you know what? No, no. What did you think of my good situation based on what you heard? Because I told you I th I told you too. Well, I think I think I think your situation, from what you what you explained to how you met the guy, and why you want to go talk to him, was very sincere. Well, it's two different ones. So the first one, I I knew him before he got locked up. Briefly though, it wasn't that long because we met like that Labor Day weekend. It was Labor Day, so we met like that Labor Day weekend, and then by like probably like a month or two later, he was already he he got locked up. So his that was a brief uh that was a that was a two month you not in jail we getting to know each other informational type deal that I ended up doing a five year bid with but um the second one was totally different and all I'm gonna say is me and Quentin's story we don't we don't have the same story our stories are, are a little different and the reason our stories are a little different is because from a female perspective and a female standpoint of uh. Dealing with a man in jail, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, it really is a different, it, it really is a different thing, especially if you did not necessarily know him prior to him going to prison. Um, and like I said, the first one uh, that I did the five year bid with, um, I didn't necessarily know him, know him. I knew him because we had started talking to each other, but I really didn't know him. According to him, one of the reasons why. Because even when he got locked up, we weren't even talking at that point. He had his mother reach out to me um, once he got locked up. And he was like, I had her do that because I knew you would be the only person that would understand and that would really take the time and do this bit. And I, now that I'm like 40, I realized that he was really trying to waste my damn time. Oh, okay. At 40, I realized that. But um, at that age, how old was I then? Uh, 23, somewhere around there. I didn't get that part. You think, I'm, I'm going to ask you, and I, 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 you think he was trying to waste your time? Yeah, he tried to waste my damn time. Yes, he did. He wasted all of my good time. Those were good years in my 20s wasted, okay? And I'm going to tell you why I'm saying what I'm saying. I asked my friend, I, I asked somebody that was around back then if they would join uh, I don't know if he's going. I don't know if he's going to see my text message, but there's a reason that I'm saying that. Number one, because we play a lot of games. Okay. Mm. Um, 
and you know, to his defense, I guess a little bit, he was also young. We were, he was probably about like 20, 21. I'm like 23, 24, somewhere around there. You know what I'm saying? So when you're that young and you're going through that level of a situation, um, a lot of the times you don't fully, you're not fully grasping all the things that you're doing. And the truth of the matter was at that time, for my age, I had a good job, right? Hindsight, you know, I'm like, I mean, it was all right. But at that time, for my age, I had a good job. So that was a lot of money being spent. That was a lot of time being spent. That was, a, I mean, I did a lot to be that young in a relationship with someone that was locked up. Um, dealing with the fact that, you know, the first, like the first, the first year or whatever, it was like, okay, because he got sent home on an ISP program, um, which then turned into being a whole nother nightmare because of the things that were going on while he was on the ISP program. Um, because he was cheating. I didn't find that out until years later, you know what I'm saying? That he was cheating. He was cheating on me with his daughter, mother, um, lying uh, to the point where even while on the ISP program, the uh, the officer that was in charge of him, when they basically finally came to rearrest his himself and take him back to jail because he just completely violated the entire program, um, dude was like, you know, we put you on this ankle monitor, we put you on this ankle bracelet to monitor where you're at, and we told you that you cannot go down into uh, Middlesex County, but according to this ankle bracelet, based on the direction that you were in and the amount of miles that you were away from this starting point here home, clearly you were in Middlesex County, and it appears that you were here, and, it, and he tried to lie and say some dumb stuff, and the dude just really looked at him and was like, do you really believe the lies that are coming out of your mouth? Like, and I'm sitting there like, yo, this is real. Like, dude, is not even playing. And the way that they brought, so an ISP program, I don't know how it works now, but back then, when you violated, like, they literally, like, surrounded your house like it was SWAT, okay? <laughs> so it was like, the, and at that time, I was living down in Elizabeth, down by the water. So it's like, you got all these people. And luckily, the officer, he knew me. So he was like, and he looked at me and he said, I was like, I don't know how you deal with him. You understand what I'm saying? Like the officer is really like, I just, I don't, he is a liar. Okay. Like, and I was just like, oh, here we go. Right. So now he gets sent back because at this point, like I said, living in Union County. So he has to go to Union County jail. Anybody know anything about Union County jail? It's horrible to do visits at Union County jail. It's one of the worst jails to do visits at. It's just ridiculous. I don't even know how they are today because back then it was terrible. So Still got to get a ticket from what I know. Oh yeah. And then come back. <laughs> it's just, it was, that was just a horrible experience and he's back in there. Oh, I love you. And I'm sorry. And blah, 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 blah. All this, other, all, all this extra stuff and me being my young dumb self falling for all that foolery, you know, so he goes back down state or whatever, which is perfectly fine. And he has to do his bit out there. Well, now, now you want to apply to halfway houses. Now you want to do halfway households or the extra stuff. So now we got to deal with the Bo Robinson type situations. Now you want to get jumped into gangs and all this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like there was so much that went on with that whole situation that was just totally toxic. On top of the fact that I forgot the name of the halfway house. This is the one that's all the way down to like Bridgeton. Yes. Whatever that one is called. So that was like the last halfway house that he went to because after he left uh, Bo Robinson, that you know you, that's like halfway back. You go down to the real halfway house, and then you're supposed to come out from the halfway house. But that ain't happened with him because he ended up getting sent back to prison from the halfway house because people just can't follow rules and stuff. And mind you, be that was like at that time with that um, handheld PSP. What did I think of PSP? Mm -hmm. I think that was yeah. So he gets into the halfway house. Oh, I gotta have my PSP. Oh, I gotta have this. Me dummy over here with the good job buying all this crap psps pillows bedding all this stuff like i literally came down you would have thought it was christmas at that halfway house with as much crap as i was bringing out of my car into that halfway house where like even the counselors in the halfway house is looking like yo he can't have all these pillows i was like oh well can he at least have one you understand what i'm saying like that that's the level and i'm like Come to find out, he down there trying to act like, oh yeah, why watch what I 
telling people, oh yeah, watch what I'm gonna have her bring tomorrow. Watch what I'm gonna have her bring here. Watch what I'm gonna have her do this. And then on top of that, having his daughter mother come down there and he trying to act like he in a relationship with both. It was just some trash stuff that was really going on. And so when the truth began to really come out concerning like a lot of the things that he was doing or whatever, it didn't come out until like way after the fact. But when we ended up actually splitting and just parting ways was due to the fact that when he actually did come home from the halfway house, I was living down in Pennsylvania at the time. And I guess he thought that uh, things were going to be the way that it was and it, it, and it, it just couldn't be. So um, he started to like try and play all the little games that he was playing before. But at that point, I'm older now. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little bit more mature. Um, I got an even better job at this point. And it's like, no, these things. And, and, and it was like prior to him coming home, I wasn't struggling. But as soon as you hit the door, I'm struggling at this point. Now, nah, we something is something is off, you know. And so we started arguing and we was arguing. And then he decided to put his good hands on me and choke me out. Uh, and that was it. It was a wrap. And uh, I mean, that's how that that's how that look. That's how that story ended. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was a, it was a real situation and it was a real it was a real time. It was a real experience. And it was a lot that went went along with that. You know, it was it was just it was too much. You know what? Everything wasn't peaches. It wasn't no. Oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, the Senate third. And yeah, did he write letters? Of course, he wrote good letters, you know, letters that would literally make you think that he meant everything that he said. And them letters was nothing but a bunch of words. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, what I, 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 I think Nakia. Like you know, like I told you, we we even though our situation is different, the great thing about you you allowing us to do this show is we both come different perspectives. I come from someone who's on the inside, you come from someone who's on the outside. Um the dynamic that I that I realize is that I believe a lot of relationships um go through that, go through that experience. We are we're around the same age. And a lot of guys be in the street, and a lot of guys be so much into the street that they don't slow down for their mm -hmm. mate. For their mate, so going to jail, it allows that mate to really get to know who they're dealing with. Uh, or it could be a situation where she don't really know him, he don't really know her. Like you said, he he reached out to his mother, like that. That that sounds so. Something like that sounds like something I would have done, to be perfectly honest with you. Ma, get in touch with this girl and the kid, yo. She good people. I need to holler at her. Because I know the dynamic. I mean, sometimes I believe that a lot of people um in those situations on our on on the, the, the jail side mm -hmm. are very sincere. I believe they're sincere. It's just a matter of you want this, and now you're being a little selfish, and you don't realize that, okay, you're doing the bid, but now somebody else is doing the bid too. Yeah, because you know it's like I mean? your whole life going, like you can't enjoy life. Like it's not, it's it's really not enjoyable. You can't enjoy life. The things that you would want to do with your man, whatever the case may be, you can't do. You got to wait for them to come home. You got to wait for them to be able to call you. If they got a cell phone, you got to wait for a certain time for them to be able to call you when the guard ain't watching. Also, it's a it's a lot. You know, there's, there's a lot that goes on along with that. Uh, mentally, you have to be very strong. Emotionally, you have to be very strong. But he, you know, to be honest, I mean, he was the first person I have, I ever did um, uh, all out bid with and what I will say is that it taught me a lot and it taught me what to look for uh, and what not to fall for, right? Because the truth of the matter was, I mean, like I said, hindsight became 2020 with his situation. I mean, I found out he was talking to multiple other chicks in there. Um, there was a lot, there was a lot going on that was happening way behind the scenes that I literally just didn't really know about. Um, and it, that that's when it is it begins to make you question like what what and like what did I believe? What did I really what did I really think that this was? Because it wasn't that. You know what I'm saying? And then it begins to because I mean everybody tells the stories, you know. 
nine times out of ten, there are mad dudes that are locked up and they, they have all their good pen pals, every single last one of them. They got the ones that they can call on the phone. They got the ones that they can write letters to. They got the ones that's going to send them oh. to the They got the ones that's going to come up there for a visit. You got the one that's coming to the nine o'clock visit. Then you got the other one that's coming to the 12 o'clock visit. You got the one that's gonna, like, <laughs> it's real and it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, and 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 that's, that, that's the real little situation that people don't like to deal with. They don't like to deal with the fact that there are other things that really go on. If you can't make a visit, they might make, oh, no, babe, I ain't going to be able to come up there this week. Oh, okay, no problem. You know, I understand. Next thing you know, now, as soon as you hang up that phone, they call it the next one to be like, listen, can you come up here? I want to visit. Why? Because that visit is important to them. Had Not having a visit means something in there. Not getting mail means something. Not being able to make a phone call, mean, all that stuff means something. I mean, to me, it, it means absolutely nothing. But when you're locked up, it means a whole lot. You yeah. know it, it it means it means a lot because I guess you know now looking back at it you want to feel the void of being wanted that yo somebody somebody loved me out there in them streets as we would as we would say when I was around um so I guess you know when you're a certain age you 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 look forward to that type of stuff if you're behind the wall I mean. I guess when you get to a certain point when you're behind the wall and you start to mature, it's all about getting out. Like none of that stuff means nothing to you, but but coming home, like we discussed behind the scenes, like at the end of the day, for a person, if a person continues to go back and forth to jail from doing the same thing, they'll get ready. They'll get tired when they get tired. It's not going to happen for nobody but the person. They can't do it for their kids. They can't do it for their wife. You got to do it for yourself. Like You get tired of the whole experience when you speak about Bo Robinson, the assessment center, the county, making sure you got the $50, for, as we would say, rent. You, know, you got to make sure you put more than $50 because the first $50 they take out. I mean, I was I was sharing an experience today with one of my coworkers who who went through the same thing I went through, and I was he's a little bit younger, and I was telling him, I said, you know, I, I'm a little older than you. I said, um, you know, when I first started, when I first started out, and I went through my first experience, you used to be able to get the food packages. Your right. family used to be able to send you food packages. We wore our own clothes, mm -hmm. so forth, so on. I said, I seen it all go through to where it is now with they don't allow smoking in, in, in jails. I said, you know, at at the end of the day, I was telling him, like, look, no matter how much they give you or how much they take away, nothing is worth your freedom. You know what I mean? So you got to make the choice of, yo, is my freedom more important than everything else? And dealing with women, you... You can't. I've been there. Just, just put it that way. I did did every situation, every bit a person can do. Um, when you when you talk about how he was trying to, he was being manipulative. Um, I've experienced that. I experienced trying to be trying to be honest, but get what you want in this in the same process. And the bottom line is that sometimes. You're so vulnerable that you need to tell the person on the outside, like, look, I don't want nothing from you but moral support. How how often that happen? That's that's very rare. See, see that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Rare. That's very the, rare. All jokes, the realness of it, like I said, I did about four experiences with this stuff. Um, two people, I don't really count them, but they they do count a little bit or whatever. But the truth of the matter is the the honesty, the uh, <laughs> the integrity behind it. You don't always get that. And now, what I will say is, is that the second time, which was with my first husband, he was the first person I ever married, and I married him behind bars. Um, September 9th, two thousand nine, nine nine nine. Me and him was getting married over there in the good old Arizona prison. Now, um, with him things were a lot different. And I will say that publicly because they were. Um, one of the things that, which was weird because when he was supposed to get out, it's just weird how, it, like I, I always tell people, April 24th is a very, it's a very uh, traumatic day for me because it, it signifies so much. But 
one of the uh, one of the first things that it signifies is the death of my biological father. The second thing it signifies was the fact that my ex-husband, he was supposed to come home that day and the feds picked him up from the jail. Third thing it signifies is when I miscarried and then my the, the second the second husband in quotations put my head through that car window. All that stuff happened on April 24th. Wow. Just in different years, right? But with him, even when the feds came and picked him up on April 24th, right, 2010, um, and I had to go down in Newark to the FBI building to pick up his stuff. One of the things that they were very sure to let me know, which was very, it was, it was strange to me then, but I, I it, it offered me clarity today, right, in the present time. They were like, one thing we can say about you, ma'am, is the fact that um, when he met you, he cut everybody off because we were already, they were like, we were already monitoring. So we already knew that. And I, in my head, I'm like, why are y'all even telling me that? Right now, if we understand how FBI you know, agents work or whatever, it's to build trust. Right. So they're going to let you know something because they want to build trust with you so that you'll be able to basically try and help them get whatever they need from your spouse, boyfriend, whoever the case may be. So that was their lev that was like them, their, their leverage to try and build trust. Thank you, James, for coming on here, because you know what? Because I made him come on here. I, I text him. I said, I know you ain't sleep. You just go deep I, know you was, I was, I was. Thank you. Get in some light, please. You're on live. Thank you. <laughs> Find the light. Can you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. I just need you to uh, find a light. He, he would right. Thank you. Find a light, sir. Hold on. I, I, I'm talking. What? What do you want? First of all, don't what me. <laughs> so here's what we're talking about, James. We're talking about finding love behind bars. Now, James knows me very well. James has known me since I was in my good 20s. Okay. Yeah. Shut up, time. James. Don't long, long, long time ago. Long for, 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 first of all, <laughs> don't throw that many longs in the conversation. <laughs> you was okay with one long, and then you wanted to go on with with more than one. No, I'm talking. I'm on the phone. Hmm. Uh, nah, the podcast thing. Now, James. Yes. What's your take on this whole lockdown prison love? Because I know you. <laughs> cause you know me. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Now, let me tell y'all, cause I tell the truth. I tried to hook James up with my cousin while he was still locked up. Dang, work out right? No, I didn't. I know. Well, I, I'm not. I'm not going to ask James no crazy questions. So <laughs> James, 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 James seemed like one of the brothers that 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 I done did bid with uh, bids with that keep it a hundred. He does. That's so, so, so his realness might have scared someone away. It does. It do, no time some, you playing games. You feel what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, some man, brothers be man, keeping it a hundred. I a believe man, that man in that situation. What do you? What do you? What do you? What do you get out of playing games? You feel what I'm talking about? You're right, James. So let's talk about the games because what was I not being ran game on, James? Oh yeah, you know, but you, 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 that that situation, you know, <laughs> I can't even talk about that. But yeah, you know, you know, you've been new. Mm hmm. It was, See, sometimes it was, it's a situation that you allowed yourself to get caught up in through emotions and feelings, and I know you learned from it, so you did take something away from it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh -huh. James, did you ever you you know what? You never really did get like connected to a woman while you was locked up like that, though. No. Nah, nah, Why really. not? Because at yeah. that time I can't focus on that. And when I'm I'm doing my time, and I ain't I ain't the type that just just I can't just dive into something like that when I'm I'm doing time. You feel me? I gotta stay focused on what I'm doing and stay focused on where I want to be when I'm done. See now he's now, now now he's a person that 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 he bids as we would say he bids. Yeah, she know that she know that. Trust me, she know. So some 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 people um uh, will will bid, but they need somebody to bid with. Nah, not not know. saying not saying their intention is to use anybody because I don't think that 
my experience, I don't know his James is, and I won't put words in his mouth. Brothers have Some good, people, brothers have yeah. intentions, and they just need they need that shoulder. You know, every day in prison ain't sweet. You know what I'm saying? So they just be needing that shoulder some time to talk to and anything like that. But me, I'm just I I do mine. So you know what I'm saying? Now, if you willing to get involved with me and we doing it, then we cool. That's cool. But I'm not going. I'm not going to just dive into it head first and a hundred percent when I know where I'm at and I know where you at. It don't really make sense. You feel what I'm saying that 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 really don't make sense because it's still at the end of the day, it's still a lost connection, a connection that's needed to be in a relationship. I agree. <laughs> I no because based on my experience now, what I, what I will say, what James? That's why you got me on here. <laughs> Because I agree. No, I have you on here because so ba you because you went through the shit with me, so you know me very well. So and you know I ain't gonna lie, and you you and I know you will keep me honest in all things. So therefore, uh, that's why I had to text you three times to be like, I know you're not sleep. Get up and get on this podcast. I don't care what you think you got going on. I'm with okay. You. Right now, my grandmother and anything, but I still took time out to come in. And Wait a minute, you up here? You ain't tell me. No, no, my grandmother down here. Ah, uh, I'm about to say. Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, we were about to have a whole good moment live. If I was up there, I would have told you. Mm-hmm. Oh, your grandmother down. Okay, cool. But I had to bug you a little bit, just, just, just because, just because, just because, just because. Hey, anyway. Buddy. We tight, you know that. Yeah, but you keep walking around in a circle and you're making me dizzy. That's what I'm gonna tell you. It's a habit. <laughs> it's just a habit. Oh, you just don't want to find a light and just stay in one place. Thank you. Thank you for staying in one place for right now. Just hold hold up now. Thank you, James. Like you just said, the reason why you never got involved in a relationship while you were yet and still locked up was because you were like, nah, I'm doing my time. Like I need to focus. And some people need that extra cushion of another person, but you was always able to maintain. So, but you were still always open to meet new people. Yeah, you always gotta do that because you don't know what 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 life what what you know what life will bring you after you released, after you leave. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, if it happens, it happens. But if it don't, it don't. And I'm not crushed behind it because I, I can't be. I won't be crushed behind it because I didn't. I didn't. Like I said, I didn't give. A, I didn't go all out for it because the simple fact that I know. Like I said, I know where I'm at and what I'm doing, and I know where you at and what you're doing. Like you know what I mean? And I can't control what you do, and you can't control what I do. Well, I mean, there wasn't much you could do. Exactly. Well, 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 you know. well, well James is one of the, one. Of the <laughs> See, James, one of the brothers that would have been telling the young boy, yo, man, you ain't going to be handcuffing nobody, bro. Yeah. Fall back. Like, <laughs> I was already doing it. I you know already. already see, it's, it's, see, Nakia, honestly, like the funniest thing that most people don't know, it's like an uh, a unspoken language in there yeah. that brothers that brothers have with each other where you know the ones that's playing, you know the ones that's serious, mm -hmm. you know the ones that's that's gonna mess their bed up. You know the ones that's just trying to get home. It's it is like a all I can say is if you have never experienced it, it's an unspoken language. You already know, bro. You already know. Just listen to you see that, you already understand the whole situation. You already know. Yeah. I don't know. So explain it to us ones who don't know. Because what there's listen, I'm feel like I'm in school right now. See, see, when, when when you, I'm going back to that class see, I'm over when, it. When you when you explained the situation about Bo Robinson and how you was bringing him all that stuff, James, remember all that crap I brought down and, here to um to, to um you know, you know I know. And and and, and had he and that. had he been in the room and Bo Robinson with the right type of men, they would have told him. Yo, you got a good one there. Stop playing games. He was there with me. He was there with me. And, and, I'm, and, and I'm quite sure you was on him. Tighten up. But, you know, he young, dumb, and all that goofy mess. But I'm like, bro, you need to tighten up. Like, this woman yeah. traveling. Yeah. I mean, like, she traveling. It ain't it ain't like she live around the corner. You feel what I'm talking about? She traveling, nigga. 
You feel yeah, me? See, but, see, the, the, see, the, see the, the talk is there, the kid. This, this is what I mean. The at talk the day, was there. At the, the day, at the end of the day, though, you know, he won the move high yellow pretty ass nigga. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> You feel what I'm saying, bro? You know what I mean? One of them, one of them niggas with, 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 he feel like he entitled to some shit. He, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, one of them niggas, that, that house nigga. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? My master visit the quarters on several occasions type shit. Yeah. But, yeah, you know what I mean? And, and you know, all running around licking his lips and shit like that. She needs to go back. You know what I'm surprised. You know when you get on my nerves. I was like, I don't know if James gonna put James or if he's gonna put street, but <laughs> whatever. Me, keep, don't keep it honey. You knew what type of nigga you was with. Nick got all he got Vaseline on his lips and shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, 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 but the kid, this that's the thing that is unspoken. That talk was given. See, yeah, a, a lot of people be like, a lot of people under that myth that men, men don't check men, they just let them do what they want to do. That's a myth. Yeah, so Sometimes That's a nigga get outrageous with his, you know, and then think like, like his shit don't stink. You know what I'm saying? And and then and then when you realize he a real live skydiver, that's when you got to protect your own bed. Like, look, man, yeah. young boy don't want to listen, man. I'm gonna just let him just do him. After that, it was time to just let him go. Plus, we, me and son, had our own issues, like you know what I mean. But we not going into them issues, James. Thank you. Yeah, I said we ain't getting into all that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that, that, but I'm I'm saying the kid. I believe a lot of dudes in jail from from my experience myself. We be sincere. Yeah, you know. It be sincere. Right, Joker. But a Joker, it, it's best if if you if even if you do meet somebody that's locked up. You feel me? It's best that y'all set boundaries from the rip. You feel uh -huh. what I'm saying? From like y'all said boundaries listen he got to tell you he got to be a man about his shit and tell you like look ma i'm in here doing this you out there you living life but i'm in here doing this now if you want you want to come along for the ride then i'm i'm all with that now this is it be coming from his heart you feel what i'm saying but if the joker just playing he ain't he ain't gonna be willing to step up and say nothing like that in the first place because mm -hmm. the simple fact that he think he, he think he doing something he think he working it he think he, he maneuvering it yeah. but that day you just a clown Okay. Yep. Oh, come on, clown. My family. I love baby girl. Love you, James. And when I do get up to Jersey, I'm gonna holler at you. you hear me? All right. All right, bro. You already, y'all be good, man. All right. Oh. All right, be easy. Yeah. So, so I I agree with James that, and it's interesting that you know you didn't tell me that caveat that he was around him. Oh, he was around. So, so that conversation does go on, which is interesting. Like I said, because a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah, you mind your business, but at a certain point, like, yo, bro, slow down. Like, you know, she coming here, like you was coming way down there, Trenton. No, no, yeah. it was further. He was talking about um, when they were down by Bridgeton, whatever. Oh, you was, 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 was going to, you was going to Kentuck too. So you, you was that going to, Ken, you was going to Kentuck, seeing it, like, dude. It's people that say stuff that be like, yo, like, and then like being that he was from up north, it wasn't too many people from up north down there. Mm -mm. So you, he but gets James, was, James was from up north because James from north. James, yeah. from, let me tell you something. one thing. Let me say this. I mean, he done got off or whatever, but let me. One thing I could say about James. James is a real dude. I had an issue with like, real talk. I had an issue with a bishop like maybe last year, and dude was like real flip out his mouth. And um, I contacted James and I was like, yo, I think you might know him. He was like, what's his name? He was like, all right, I'm on it. I, I'm going to put my brother on it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, thank you. You know, and one of the things that I could say is, is that I can respect that um, because sometimes you need that. I met James all the many years ago, going back all the way down there at Kentuck. You know what I'm saying? And from that, he always maintained a connection with me like, yeah, you sis. You know what I'm saying? And even when the whole situation happened with me and my ex, James was like, yo, I'm real angry about that. Like, I'm angry about that. And I was like, don't do, it's all right, I'm good, right? Sometimes you need to have that, that level of connection with people because they understand how good you really are. Mm 
Mm -hmm. and they know you and they know your heart and then they get tired of people trying to play with your heart like like he like he said him and dude have you know they they own good little beef that 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 they got going on and i whatever the case may be but one of the things that i always maintain even with him is a level of peace like let that go you know what i'm saying like we look we 10 years old to let that go you know what i'm saying So, you know, but I can respect it because I understand game, right? And anytime you enter into anything, um, you you have to respect the boundaries that are set within it. And people don't really, like how he said, when you're dealing in that type of situation, there's always, there, there's a level of boundaries that everyone has set, that everyone has made up. That's why I said my experience one of the better experiences I had was with my ex-husband, my the real ex-husband, um, because we didn't have those issues. We didn't have issues of other women. We didn't have issues of, of none of it. We had other stuff that was going on, like some real live stuff that was really going on. But as far as all of that stuff was concerned, we didn't have none of those issues. And you know, like I said, when the feds come in and they they want to they want to build trust with you, that's one of the first things they want to tell you. Well, you know what? Well, let me tell you this much, okay? We know for a fact he wasn't emailing, calling, or doing nothing with nobody else but you. Thank you for letting me know that. But that still doesn't give me comfort with talking to you. So, can I get his stuff and can I go? Am yeah, I you, go? Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, up until that date, like you said, that day, April 24th, y'all don't rock my world again. With him they not crushed, coming along, they crushed my good hope. Right? And, and 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 here it is. Not only is he a, getting a new charge, now y'all sending him halfway across the country. Listen, and we was married. We were actually married. You know what I'm saying? We was really, really married. And the thing about that whole situation was was the fact that I didn't know them, but they knew me. How'd you feel about that? If you don't I, mind me asking. I like that part because they knew everything. Like they picked him up, right? From straight from the jail. I didn't see him. I ain't none of that. We we went down there to go get him. There was no go getting him. There was there was feds. Okay. They didn't even let us know what happened until way after the fact. Then we go to leave the jail. They want to pull us over and act real dumb about it. You know what I'm saying? Then we get through that situation. I go to the first day of court. You know, they just walk up on me like uh, Mrs. Gums here. I'm like, how the heck? Who, who are you people? And what are you handing me? If you want to pick up your husband's property, it's here at this location. I don't want to go nowhere. So now I'm talking to his lawyer. Like, who are these people? Why do they know me? What is going on here? Who are they? And he's like, those are the U.S. Marshals. So I'm like, oh. OK, so they know. Me. And then. Go down there to go pick up his stuff. I mean, these folks is running down my life. They got pictures of MySpace up on a big ass screen. Okay. Like, ma'am, I'm like, what the fuck? Well, this is you and this is you. I was like, no, that's not me. Ma'am, is your name not Nakia? Yeah, that's my name, but that's not me. So they had me confused with someone else. Right. They were like, well, we know this happened on such and such a date and we know that happened on such and such a date. And I'm like, now I'm sitting here because for me, I said, you know what? If they got any type of body sensor stuff up in here, they already know I'm getting hot. So I'm just going to sit up here straight face because there's no <laughs> there ain't no other face for me to make. Now, if they got a body motion sensor type thing. They already know my insides is getting hot. OK, however, I'm going to keep a straight face with you. Is there anything else you would like for me to say? What 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 are you looking for? What 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 are we here for? What what is this about? Can I take his stuff and can I go? No, ma'am, you're free to go. Thank you. And goodbye. Cause I'm out of here. You and your little federal building. And you ain't got to worry about me coming back here neither, because I'm not. And you want to know what I did with all the stuff they gave me? I dumped it on the side of the road. You want to know why I got dumped? Because in my mind, I don't know what type of bug y'all might have put in there. Y'all got my nerves bad, and I'm dumping it. He was so mad at me when I dumped it. I was like, uh-uh, I don't know what they did with that stuff. 
They could have put any type of little wire tap, any type of little, I don't want nothing to do with the U.S. Marshals. I literally dumped it in Harlem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like, you ain't go through none of it. I said, no, it all got dumped in Harlem. Period. Point blank the end. Harlem. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, that don't, you know, like, so, so in that situation, you don't think that that was sincerity? Who? Or all the BS that you went through behind that marriage? No, my marriage was good. I ain't even gonna hold you. Uh, I always say that I truly believe that if he would have came home April 24th, 2010, we still would be together today. He probably, I can honestly say there have probably only been two men that have ever truly loved me. And he's one of them, period. That loved me enough to make sure that I was okay. That loved me enough to make sure that I was protected. That loved me enough to make sure that I was good. He's one of them. Period. That that hands down goes to him. Um, even to this day, in his anger, because he was he was he wasn't angry that we got divorced. He was angry that I didn't stick around, you know, to at least help him through the process of you know the years that the feds did give him. You know what I'm saying? And um, but even with his anger, he still showed love even through all of that. So no, like his was, now that first situation, that was a big, big joke. And I, I'll tell anybody that, I don't care. I, 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 I don't, I'll tell, I, and to be to be honest, I'll tell him that. Like I still see him to this day, me and his mom are still mad close and all of that stuff. Like still to this day, me and his mother are, are extremely close. And no, I will tell him to his face, like that was a joke, that wasn't real, like no. Cause it wasn't, but with my ex-husband, that was all the way real because we had a deeper, we had a different level of a connection um, that is inexplicable. You know what I'm saying? There was okay. certain things, like, because of who he is um, and it, cause it's not a was, it's a is, because of who he is, um, there were certain things that I was able to introduce him to that he never really had anybody like say to him and be as bold and as blunt with it. You know what I'm saying? Like at one point, cause he was like, you know, when I first met him, he was like, you know, you could Google my name. You know who I am. Everybody know who I am. So and so and so I'm this. And I'm like, oh, okay. And you're right. I can Google you and I will. But however, <laughs> word up. I was like, but however, I think you need to understand that world. I, and I told him this. I said, that world that you live in is so small compared to this big world that I live in. I said, so the fact that I would need to Google you for the for the city that you're from to look you up to find out who you are means that you're not even on a larger scale of life. Like I live in a big world. You live in this world. This world is small. I need you to come up. Live in this big world. You know what I'm saying? And at that and point. And that's a whole nother subject that you just touched on. Yeah, because it's the, the, sub, truth. the subculture and you thinking that you're part of the grand scheme of things and not realizing you ain't even experienced nothing yet. And that goes back to what I told you about the starting all over again. Like here it is, I'm almost 40 and I ain't even really lived. I've been alive, I've been alive, but I ain't lived nothing. I ain't did nothing. But that's real. Like at the end of the day, he was young too. Then when me and him met, he was he was still in his thirties. We both was like, you know, what I'm saying, in our thirties or whatever. But when you're accustomed to a certain lifestyle and you're accustomed to a certain way of living, and all you're around are people that are accustomed to that way of living, you don't know nothing else. That's all you know. You know that street life. You know that hood life. You know, that's what you know. So in the hood, you mad big. Yeah, your name rings bells. But at the end of the day, that's the hood. Yeah. Right? So like I, like I said to him, I live in a big world. So I don't know this world that you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Now I will, I can Google you and I will. And I did. And I read every single last chart. And I told him, I was like, I, I read it, all your charges. I read that don't scare you. Who are you today, sir? 
Because what that sounds like to me is nine years ago, you, because that was how long ago that was. But who are you today? What are you about today? Where are you at today? And that was when we really started pushing his books because he had wrote like mad books while he was in there. And he was a dope writer. Like he still is. He's a dope writer. And he has a way to captivate and draw people in. And he was like, no, nah, I got these books. I done mailed them all to my mother. I was like, let me see them. So I literally went down to his mom's house and I started like, one of the books that he wrote that actually is published even right now, I edited the book, although he didn't give me credit for it, which is perfectly fine because he was mad. And I told him that when I spoke to him on the phone, like maybe a year ago, I was like, you should have gave me credit for editing that book because you took my edits and you put it in that book and you ain't give me credit for it, but that's okay. But he published it because that's his work. Like he, he's a dope writer. He has a way, like the way he writes is, it is sick. It really is sick because I never saw somebody like literally write like that and could li like the way the way he uses descriptive terms um, in order to describe the whole scene or something. It literally draws you into the moment like he's good like that. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I told him, like, you need to focus on that. But, you know, when you're locked up like that, you can't um, you're not allowed to profit off of, you know, anything truth be told. So, um, you know, you have to be careful when, you, when you're dealing with all of that stuff. But he's a dope writer. And that was one of the things that I told him, I said, you need to focus on that. Focus on your books, get them books published, focus on you. You know what I'm saying? And focus on life beyond these walls. Like that. that's my whole thing. My whole thing with anybody that's locked up is focus on life be beyond the walls. Don't focus on just your situation and what you're trying to get out of the situation that you're in. That was what was the wrong with the first one. The first one, we just wanted to focus on the situation. Mm -hmm. but he could get out of the situation while in it and didn't have a plan for when he was coming out mm -hmm. with my ex-husband. I wanted him to have a plan for when he got out. What are you going to do? So you know what? you like to write. So, you know, what? we're going to push this book. I mean, I literally went, there was a, a publisher out in Harlem that I, I literally went to go meet with, um, you know, while he was still in there to try and get, and dude didn't really want to do anything until he was out. But at the same time, it was, to, it was to help him see the vision. Like, nah, you got to see beyond these walls, like mm -hmm. that lifestyle, what you was used to, what you was accustomed to that that's for the birds. You, 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 literally, you literally provided hope. You have and, to. And, and, and that's what is like unspoken. Like a person needs that. And and a person may, uh, people on the outside may not understand that in spite of if you got a day, 10 years, 20 years, even some people I know that ain't never coming home. They have hope, you know, and for them to meet somebody on the outside that is, that is instilling hope in them, that is that you know, one of those things that's the connection. Like, you know, I just be shooting ideas to her and she take she's making my ideas become a reality. Right. And that's like you, in, in, in his eyes, he was telling you the vision and you was actually showing and proving like, look, it ain't that hard. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. I went to the publisher and, <laughs> and to me, that's very sincere. And yeah. I know a lot of people on the outside who don't understand the dynamic of how you could fall in love with someone that you're not physically around. It's because of that hope. So he, much. He's um he's still in there. The feds gave him a lot of extra time. So he's still in, but he, he published a book while in there. He did publish a book while in there. He published a couple of books while in there. One of the books is called How to Keep Your Kids from Gangs. So he, he published a couple of books while in there. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic, Frank. That's a good question, though. That's a good question because a lot of times, Frank, I'm speaking, I can speak on, on, on the opposite of that. If I if I would have been home, a lot of a lot of a lot of guys don't realize when they come home, um, you don't want to build up a false hope in your mate. You want to keep it a hundred, as they say. And what you what a person needs to do when they first come home, in spite of having that significant other that they met, 
they got to focus on getting on their feet. Yeah, and that 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 is one of the things that I believe that <laughs> part of the reason why you can't have a um, man or a woman, whomever, but for me being a woman, the man can't have a woman that can't survive on her own. Because at the end of the day, when he's coming out, he's literally starting from scratch. So there has to be a certain level of foundation. If you're going, if you're going to be a woman that is with a man that is locked up for an extended period of time, they have a readjustment period, especially if mm -hmm. like for my ex-husband, he was locked up <laughs> over 10 years, right? Now, right now you're dealing with about 20 years, a little bit over 20 years of him being locked up, right? Cell phones ain't the same. Cable is not the same. How we access public transportation is not the same. So he and I literally had discussions on how he was going to need to be reintroduced back into society in order for him to even be able to function, right? And not feel like a fish out of water. You know what I'm saying? Like as if he's about to drown and suffocate. No, we're going to help you um, get adjusted. And that those are those are things that you have to literally discuss. That's why I said that now that first situation for the birds, but this second one with my ex-husband was very real and it was very raw and it was it it was very different, you know, because we actually discussed life after lockdown. We discussed how everything was going to work. We discussed like the time that he was going to need in order to readjust. We discussed the fact that he was going to need to be in the house for like 30 to 60 days, just reacclimate himself with just being free before, you know, he would be comfortable with even going to a store. Like there were so many things that we discussed in order to have a better understanding. So it was kind of like, truth be told, April 24th, 2010, when the feds came and got him, it was kind of like, um, it was a shift for both of us because what we discussed was no longer the reality. And the reality was, you know, the United States versus, right? So, you know, and to shift into that level of a reality um, and to deal with that, I wasn't equipped to deal with it. And that was one of the things that he said, like when he and I spoke like a year ago, he was like, one of the, he was like, here, I understand you weren't you. This was not something you were built for. I was like, well, I'm happy you understand it. He was like, but I just felt some type of way because I felt like you just abandoned me. Like you said, I can't do this because that's exactly what I did. I did. I said, I can't do this. Like I we was behind the little screen and I said, I can't do this. OK. And he was like, you said that and you meant what you said. And that was it. You couldn't do it. I was like, because I really and I told him, I said, like, honestly, I really couldn't. I wasn't built for it. I couldn't do that. He got 14 years. 14 additional years off of that Fed charge. I was like, we didn't sign up for that. We signed up for one year. We didn't sign up for 14 of those. So I, I, this was not going to be my reality. Yeah. yeah. You know I, think, I, mean? I think I think that that. Um... Like you said, that situation is unique within itself because yeah. everything y'all, y'all whole conversation and based off of what you said, y'all whole conversation was planning on April 24th being the day that y'all physically are together and all those plans come into fruition. Then when that dropped, it was like, oh, I, you know, and I, and I, you know, and, and at the end of the day, he respects it too. And he had no choice but to deal with it because it's like he didn't, but he got man. angry. Who was he angry? <laughs> he was angry. He wouldn't even talk to me. He would talk to my sister. He wouldn't talk to me. He was like, I'll I'll talk to sis because sis sis ain't do nothing. I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. But what I will say is, is that for me, when you hurt someone or whatever the case may be, I felt the need to go back and apologize to him for how he felt. Right. Because sometimes you got to free people from their emotions. And a lot of us don't 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 understand that level of. Um, I'm not going to say power, but. It's a different level Um when you know that someone was hurt based off of a decision that you made, you need to apologize to them um, because they were hurt. 
And I felt the need. I said, I need to apologize to him because of how he felt. You know what I'm saying? He felt abandoned. He felt, you know what I'm saying? Deserted. And he shouldn't have felt that way. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I was like, I need to correct this. I'm, I'm like the biggest. I'm like, I, I, I want to correct everything. If I do something wrong, I really want to correct it or whatever the case may be. So I felt the need to correct it. So that's what I did. I wanted to correct it and I wanted to reconcile the hurt. So that number one, he's free in his emotions because I really wanted him, you know what I'm saying? If, if he chose to, you know, re-love, get married, all the other good stuff. And it, it was also freeing for myself in order to be able to do that. And that's what I did. He's the only person, okay, that I have gone back and said sorry to. The only. Only. Okay. Them other ones, I ain't apologizing for nothing. I feel like they owe me money for my time. My time was valuable. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But him, I apologize to. I did. Because I he shouldn't have felt abandoned. That was wrong. I could have stayed writing a letter or something. That wasn't right. I could have wrote a few letters. You know what I'm saying? I could have put money on his books. You know? That wasn't right. So, you know, you got to you got to make up for stuff like that. Not make up for it, but at least apologize for it, because ain't nothing you can do to make it. Although he, never mind, that's neither here nor there, because people, people be crazy. But you just got to apologize for stuff like that and move on with life. Well, I don't I don't know what more we can share with this audience. Uh, you know, I, I think that I think that sometimes the kid people need to, like I said, me and you, even though our situations are different, it's very unique. And I think that more people would rather um, speculate or assume what goes on instead of having two live guests right here who can tell them the experience and share with them their experience. It's different. Everybody's going to have a different experience. Like I had, I had two very unique experiences. One, hmm, the second one. All right. Uh, wait, Frank asked you a question. Frank, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Read the question because everybody not on Facebook. It said, it said uh, Quentin, do you think that men that are locked up go extra hard to show people that they are good men in spite of where they are? I think that you have those type of men, um, like Nakia. I'm one of them type of men. I'm very. You find yourself being very apologetic. You'd be like, damn, why well, I feel bad, why well, I feel sorry, but I guess that's just where you're at in life. I think that um, you 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 do want to show your sincerity. Um, in my situation, I believe that I was being sincere, being right, being just, being open. Like Nakia, Nakia brought up one situation that made me smile when she was talking about it. When a person, I was in a situation, right? So she says to me, yeah, I want to come see you. I was like, come see me. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. Now, most most people will be like, oh, somebody must be knocking those doors down. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't want me to come see you. And I was a thousand percent transparent. I was like, no, nah, ain't nobody coming to see me. I just don't be on that visit thing like that. I'm good. Now, to prove to her that I was good, I put on a visit and listened to time. So she came to see me. So I was moving. Like, when I mean moving, I was going, I was in the halfway house at the time. So I was coming out, but she still, on Sundays, I wasn't coming out. But she still wanted to come just in case. Because when I was in the halfway house, she would stop by the job, stuff like this. So when I got to the halfway, when I got to that Sunday, and she seen like, oh, you really don't be getting visits. I said, nah, I got to put your name on the list. You know, like, you know, it's going to be like a week, so forth. So, and I think that most people are transparent. Definitely if, how can I say it, if they respect you? What I mean by that is you know what type of woman, you know what type of woman you're dealing with most of the time. You do your background check. She do her little background check on you. Like Nakia said with her situation, he told her, Google him. But yeah, she, she wasn't big for it. She's one of the females that, 
She wasn't with the, as I say, the glitter gloss and floss. She ain't care about that street stuff. She Googled them, but she she ain't care about it. So in in in, in and I'm using the Kia as an example. In his eyes, try to speak for him, which I I think I'd be able to a little bit. He was like, oh, she different, different. She different than I'm ever used to dealing with. It, it was something that he wasn't used to. It was a whole different world. So he had no choice but to be sincere, but to show that vulnerability. And that vulnerability that he showed her, he probably never showed with no other woman. So that's one of the things that I think that guys do in jail. Um, cause a lot of, a lot of us are guarded. A lot of us are guarded even when they come home. Um, like Nakia said, and we did, we discussed that when you come home, you have to literally start your life back over. And what I mean by that is that a person coming home from jail might not even have ID. So now the ID process, if you live in the state of New Jersey, let's just look at it. If you don't have ID, you need ID to get ID. Yep. What I mean by that is that you need ID to get ID. So you have a prison ID. You take your prison ID, you draw the motor vehicle. Now it's a lot easier dealing with certain motor vehicle agencies in the state of Jersey. But before I was in that situation, I had a prison ID. Okay, I'm trying to get my license and my and and my ID. You need a birth certificate. Yep. I go I go to try to get my birth certificate. They're not acknowledging my prison ID. I'm like, look, I know who I am. I can tell you my mother's name, my mother's maiden name, the data. I the dated my original birth certificate was issued because that's what they give us just a copy. I knew all that information beforehand just to get ID. So that's just one of the small things then, you know, their living conditions, whether they got a job. And for a man, some some men that come from a certain lifestyle, it's hard to be humble like that. It's hard to have that type of pride. It's hard to go to these state agencies and people talking to you like you less than. And that puts you in situations where you might be so stressed out off of what they put you through. Then you get home to the person that been supporting you for the last two, three years. And you so frustrated, you might take it out on her. Instead of saying, baby, it was a bad day today. What you mean? Oh, I, I won't look for a job. They gave me the they gave me the uh the cold shoulder like they were gonna hire me, but I know they ain't hiring me. Like so many, so many doors get shut for a person to finally get that first door open that two, three doors getting shut they may revert back to their old self mm -hmm. and, just, and just say F it. So now all that stuff he was saying when he was behind the wall to the female, she's looking at him like, you ain't nothing but a liar because of the expectation. So it's, you know, it's a lot that goes on with this situation. It's it's, it's a lot of dynamic, you know, uh, you got to be able to... Uh, <laughs> You got to be able to to be strong. You got to be able to be sincere. Um, like I said, me and the kid, we both have have what they consider are sapiosexual, so people that love intellectual conversation. So, if if you're a conversator and someone who loves to, as we say, build with other people, you're one of those people that a person you could do a bid with a person. Mm -hmm. you know, if you if you ain't no conversator and you need to be hugged, you need to be touched, you need that physical person there. You ain't gonna be able to do it. Even if you go to, even if you meet your husband or your your wife and y'all been together for 10, 15 years on the street, if something happened and one of y'all got to go away, you'll realize that you don't really know that person because now y'all gotta y'all have to have awkward conversations that y'all never had. You'll be like, Dad, we've been living together 10 years. I never knew you felt that way. I never I never knew you like, you know, you you didn't like that food. Even though you ate it, you didn't like it. Like, and then the dynamic of not being there is it's not for everybody. 
It's not. And everybody's not built for that level of a dynamic. There are a lot of people that are not built for that level of a dynamic, which is perfectly fine. I have realized now at the age of 40, I'm not built for it either. I thought I was and I'm not. And it happens. And we all live and we learn from it. There are those that are really and truly built for it. They ride or die for it. I'm not her. I don't advise nobody to do it. If you choose to do it, that's on you. I don't have nothing to say about it. It just is what it is. Whatever experience you get from it, that's what you're going to get. Point blank, period. Whether good, bad, or indifferent, that's going to be your experience. I don't, I don't, I no, don't. People, people, people like us that's, that's, that, that are the sapiosexuals, the reason why we can't do that no more is we started podcasting. So now we're able to talk and build. I got people, people to talk to, okay? <laughs> I don't need to be on the phone with you. We get our endorphins a different kind of way now. Like, yo, I I just have a podcast day. Like, you know, let's just talk. Let's just have a conversation. And that's really all it is, just a conversation, you know. It, it, and it really, you know, sometimes I think that people don't fully understand that um, it's deeper, um, especially if you are truly a lover of conversation and if, if you are a person that loves to engage in conversation, it's deeper. And sometimes uh, we don't fully understand what that is and what that means because you think that when you're when you're when you're when you're in a relationship with someone that is behind bars, I can only truth be told, I really can only speak to my second experience. I cannot speak to the first one. I was young then. I wasn't even a sapiosexual then. Uh, I was just young and dumb and and dumb. Okay. Uh, but the second time it was a lot deeper. It was, it was, there was a deeper connection there. There was, um, there was a lot more feeling behind it. It was a lot more emotion behind it. And the way we moved together was totally different. So like I said, there's only been two men that I can honestly say that I ever have been with that actually really and truly loved me. And he's one of them. Um, and because of that, he always made sure I was okay regardless of whatever situation I was in, regardless of whatever I needed, if I needed anything, he made sure I had it. And, um, and, and that, that says a lot to him for him being locked up and being able to, you know what I'm saying, to do that or whatever the case may be. So, you know, situations were just totally different. And the way in which we connected was just totally different. He was a person, he wasn't a user you know what I'm saying? He didn't expect much. You know what I'm saying? He didn't expect um, money. He didn't expect a whole bunch of anything. All he really and truly wanted was for someone to really love him. That was it. You know what I'm saying? That was his expectation. That's what he wanted. And he received it. Right. Um, and I think that's why he felt abandoned when, you know, I filed for the divorce or whatever, because he even said it like a year ago. He was like, I ain't never married. I ain't, I don't care who come up to me. I ain't never getting married again. And I was like, that, that kind of sucks. And I'm, I'm like, hopefully I told him, I said, I hope you change your mind about that. Marriage is a beautiful thing. And the crazy part about it is when I said that <laughs> he brought up something that a pastor had said to me and him, right? at the time in which everything was going on. And the fact that he remembered it, I was like, this is why some of y'all, some of y'all pastors need to stop uh, saying things that the Lord didn't tell you to say. Uh, because he literally remembered it verbatim. He was like, what about that? And I was like, okay, you're right. My bad. Never mind. I'm just going to move forward from this conversation because I don't, I don't have a rebuttal for it, but you know, um, he was very different. I tell people all the time, if he would have came home April 24th, 2010, him and I probably would have, we, we would have still been together today with like 10 kids. <laughs> we would have had 10 kids. Y'all, y'all listen, I don't even know who knows if the muzzles or podcasts would have even been birthed at, at, at that or anything like that. Like life probably would have been totally and completely different, but you know, things happen for a reason. So, you know, the muzzles off is here and I'm here and I'm yet and still single. So it is what it is. How about that? Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's all, that's all I can share. I mean, like I said, hindsight, like I told you about my last experience I, uh, for the audience, you know, I came home. Um, I moved. I moved out of what we would consider the hood. 
um, made a decision to leave my family and friends to be with this individual. If things didn't work out, and um, you know, and if I could do it all over again and 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 be where I'm at now, I would do everything all over again exactly the same. Because you have to be able to to say, I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm happy in the space that I'm in. That's good. You know. That's really good. And at the end of the day, for me, you know what I'm saying? My experience was I lived and I learned. Um, and I carried on and moved forward. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. one of the things I don't do is I don't go backwards. I And I have no regrets. All of that stuff, like even... Everything that I experienced um, as far as prison love is concerned, I didn't really go into, um, hey, mom, she said, what's up? Okay. Um, a lot of the things that I experienced, um, I mean, because it was a lot. Uh, it, it, it really was. I try not to put my experiences out there as, as the only experience, right? Because everyone has their own level of experience. I can only speak about it from what I did experience, right? Um, but what I will say is, is that it's not for everybody. And it really you, you know what's you know it's funny you saying that because we're we're of a certain age, and we come from a certain. I Kimone am not of a certain age. Okay. Yes, you are, but you, I, I got you by a couple of years now. I say that to say that we come from a culture in an area where things happened, right? Me and you could share in that experience, but it's a lot of people that's on these outside that they ain't experienced real love. They don't know. They don't know that feeling that outside of sex, they don't know like, Yo, she really cared about me, yo. She really loved me for who I am. Yeah, and, and that's true. It's, it's, it, 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 sex has nothing to do with none of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, so we can explain it. Now, some people be like, I met this guy, I met this girl. We, we got great physical chemistry. We have a child. We're thinking about getting married. Get married, two, three years down the line. You don't really know them because you never had those conversations. You never experienced the hope. You never experienced the fear. You never experienced what it takes to maintain a friendship within a marriage. Mm -hmm. So now they get married. And, you know, he, she, like you said, she knows how to maintain. He can't really maintain. She lose her job. She get furloughed. She we dealing with COVID. You seeing a different side of that individual. You seeing an individual that, that, that at the end of the day we have something in us in human nature, self preservation. Now you saying that this dude I done did this time well not time with this dude I done been around had his babies. He's selfish as hell. He only cared about himself. And and most people, unfortunately, in this society, because divorce rates are so high, most people don't find that today, two, three years, four, five, ten years in the marriage. Oh well. <laughs> so but they'll look at uh, us and be like, Well, how that's not real love. Well, I beg to differ. I believe that it is real love. I believe that it comes from a sincere place and you really could get to know that person. It comes from an emotional and mental connection because all you really have is a conversation. That's why I said I I don't base my experience off of the first one. I was young, he was young, and that was dumb. I base a lot of it off of the second one. Why? Because we were both older, right? I was like 28, 29. We were both older and um we both had a different outlook on life. There were so many different things that at that at that time when I met him, uh, we were, we were in the midst of an economic downturn, right? There were so many things that were going on in in the world 
which I brought him into. And then on top of that, he brought me into certain things that were going on in his world. So mm-hmm. we were able to maneuver between the worlds and have conversations of the worlds and be able to bring a certain level of awareness and solution to whatever the heck was going on in these worlds, right? And I think that for a lot of people, they don't fully understand that level. I can speak on the street level all the way up to political government, whatever the heck is going on. Why? Because I have a wide range of experience. I don't limit myself to any any one world, right? And I believe that when you're relatable to people, you're able to do that. So many of us don't know how to be relatable to people because we always want to view ourselves up here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you can view yourself as up here and you can have all these little college degrees. You can have all these little letters behind your name. You can have all that stuff, right? But at the end of the day, if you can't get a message across to the common person, what, what are you really and truly, you know? And he and I had different levels of conversation where I could talk about work. And then I could talk about him and his situation. Something happened with a guard or something like that, whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? And we were able to give each other positive and or negative feedback concerning whatever it was that we were going through at that time. And I think that sometimes, you know, people always think that um, people in jail, they're, they're running game. And there are a lot of game runners. The first one was a game runner, right? But the second one was extremely real. There was no game in it. There was no hidden agenda in it. It was just, you know what? This Because the truth of the matter is he didn't need to marry me. That's real. He honestly did not need. There, there, there was not a need in the world for him to marry me. He had two women that were very much so willing to take care of him for the days of his life. In jail, out of jail, around the jail, across the jail, whoever jail. They were willing. But he chose to marry me. So it was it, it was just a, a it was a difference in what was actually going on. That's why I said, you know, at the end of the day, the second one was extremely different from the first one. And the second one, like I said, there are two people in this world right now, romantically, that I could say they actually really and truly did love me. And he's one of them. And I'll forever, you know, give him the props and and, and the respect for that, um, because the protection that he provided was totally different than, than anybody. So it is what it is. Uh, that first experience that, that was, that was different. All I can say is that was different, you know, but that's why I say I will never place my viewpoint on anybody. I tell everybody, you got to judge a situation based on what it is that you're in. I'm not going to judge a situation and I'm not going to tell you how you should feel or react in your situation. That's your situation. But it didn't work for me, so that's where I'm at. Live and let live. That's it. And I believe in it. That's it. And I believe in that. Point blank, period. Everybody got to do what everybody has to do what's right for them and their situation. And what, however that looks, that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? Like I see the TV show Lockdown Love. I was like, you know what? I could have got a check for this stuff. I wish, I wish they would have came up with it. Uh, yeah. I could have got a check for this. Them two times I could have had a whole good check. And man, listen. And all it was was somebody came home or somebody went through the experience and went to some creators and came up with the idea like lockdown love. Well, what's that? It's explained when people fall in love, when they when one is on the outside, it was oh, that's a good idea. I could have got a check for that. Listen, all of, let me tell you, we've been doing lockdown love for years. We could have got a check for that. Listen, hmm. I should have been had a check for the lockdown love. I hmm. Mm-mm. But it's okay. I'm not bitter. I have lived and learned. I'm not doing it again. And I don't advise. If anybody ever asks me, I tell them the same thing. I wouldn't do it, but that's Nakia. I would not do it. So if they would do it, that's on them. Point blank, period. All oh, right, Quentin. Like I said, I, I don't regret it, but I didn't say I would do it again, though. I don't, I, plan on, I don't plan on going back behind the walls, neither. Right. <laughs> I mean, you you could find a woman that's behind me. I'm just saying. I don't know about that. It's it's, it's beautiful out here in these streets. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
I love black women. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you better love on the black women. Black women uh, are here. We love black men. I don't uh, care. I don't uh, care. We love black men. I love black men. Although some do try to tell me, you be bash, sir, get off my page, please, and thank you. I don't bash black men. I love black men. You're crazy. Anyway, Quentin, any final remarks, thoughts, whatever? Um, live and let live. My only remark is, is, is my final thought is um, for anybody that's watching the chat, watching in the chat, watching the rebroadcast, make sure you guys hit the like and the share button and subscribe button. What this young lady is doing is not easy. It's, it's, it's a lot that goes on with trying to put a show together, let alone getting a guest that can experience what has some, some – expertise with what her subject matter is um she's she's not a celebrity yet and where she's starting from is a generic place and it's very organic and, it, and it's really starting from the ground and we want to be those who subscribed and liked her show from the beginning so we can say yeah i remember when she first started you know at the least that we could do for our friends and people that we know is to share. That's the least we could do is just share. Just So just hit that share button and tell a friend to tell a friend. I mean, because like I said, that's the least we could do. Some of us can't donate. And she do have Cash App. Um, if you could donate to her Cash App, make sure you do that. Because crowdsourcing is a part of the podcasting world. She's not getting a $100 million check from Spotify. Mm -hmm. So it's hard. We even talked about, and I'll tell y'all, we even talked about getting a camera because she's always thinking about trying to better the production. This is some things that go on as a fellow podcaster. Um, her brain is always in overdrive. She's a thinker. You guys that know her more than me know exactly what I'm talking about. Her mind, even when she's working out 4.30 in the morning, her mind is on, what can she talk about to help people? Um, so this is important. Make sure you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe button on, a, and on definitely on YouTube and on Facebook, make sure you hit the like button or the love button, because what happens with the AI from these sites is it triggers an algorithm. Her page is open. The show's open. So what happens is the more that you hit the like button, the more her page will get promoted for a bigger audience to see. So that's why you'll always hear her say, make sure you like, subscribe. This is what we have to do. This is how the information gets out there. So that's that's my final thought. Thank you, Quentin. So let's talk. And um, one of the things about us is that being, both of us are actually podcast hosts, right? Quentin has Let's Talk and I have The Muzzle Is Off. And it's both um, generating conversation around topics. Quinn does a lot more topics than I do. Like he'll talk about power. He'll get the poets and the spoken word people on there. He'll talk about whatever. I, I, I ain't even gonna hold y'all. I love when the poets come on because some of them be nice and erotic and it's just wonderful beautifulness that just gets Huh, it just it just entices your whole ear and you're just like, yeah, it's right there. Yeah, and you just start snapping, you like this with it. And it's it's a beautiful thing, right? Because this is how we support each other. Um, even as po as podcast hosts, we support each other. So he had me on his show. I was like, you know what, let's talk about this online because we 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 definitely needed to do a part two. And I just think that it, it it's important that we sh we 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 literally um, support each other, right? And sometimes uh, people don't fully know how to support because everybody wants to be jealous. And there's not a jealous bone in my body. There's not an envious bone in my body. It, there is nothing but a supportive bone in my body. So just as much as Quentin said to support me, I want everybody to support him and his platform, Let's Talk. Um, it's a wonderful platform. It's a great platform for people to really talk. Me and Quentin don't agree on everything. 
And there are some times where he, he will he will literally ignore my comments so that he doesn't have to, because you did it the other day when I made that good comment, okay, about Pence's little so-called speech and Quentin just ignored it. It was like, you know what? I'm just not going to argue with her today, which is perfectly fine because we could have had that good argument because I don't care what nobody say, you know, but it's a great platform um, in order for you to talk. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk, talk about what, talk about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. yeah we don't, it's, it's, it's what the kids explain it is we have a private group called let's talk. Um, it's part of the podcasting channel as well. But in Let's Talk, I approve basically everything. Me and the young ladies who run the group approve everything. Whatever subject that you want to talk about, talk about, um, like like Nakia said, um, political stuff, we love to talk about because that's what's in everybody's mind now, but it's not geared towards political stuff. Um, a lot of people like relationships and sexual content. Um, you know, me, I, I'm not really, I post stuff like that because people will send me stuff to post, but I really don't like to talk about that stuff because I have some type of privacy with me. But the reason why it's a private group is because I want your, what you share in the group, I want to stay in the group. So, you know, join the group, my man, you know, at the end of the day, that's like Nakia said, we're just people who love to conversate. This is what we like to do. We like to hear different perspectives of, you know, you telling me to go right, I'm telling you to go left. But according to Google Maps, we'll get there at the same time. So why should I go right? So that's all it is. It's just a, a, a fun way of us communicating. And if one of us can help one person along the way, then we did our job. That's I mean, it. That's all it's about. That's it. So I want to thank y'all for watching tonight's show on Lockdown Love. I really and truly appreciate the um, the questions that were asked. I appreciate everybody that um, followed and watched. Let me say this. Um, I honestly was not doing any more shows for the month of uh, January. I needed. I I felt like I needed a break. Um, however, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make her do a show. She got to do a Valentine's Day show for the people that celebrate that love stuff. Yeah. Oh, did y'all see the look she gave me? What? <laughs> no, I'm a forcer. She gonna do a show next week to talk about the legacy of Dr. King. Sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> I told you how podcast is mine, think we got subjects for days. She trying to take a month off, y'all. I was. I was trying to take a good month off because I felt that I needed to regroup. Okay. But that is not what is happening. Um, next week, <laughs> Wednesday, we're not going to be talking about the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. All right. We could talk about, we might talk about part of his legacy, that good cheating legacy, but over, um, <laughs> we are, I'm just saying it was there. Folk don't want to talk about that. They just want to talk about nonviolent protests and stuff. And that's perfectly fine. But we've been talking about that for 20 years now. Some of this other stuff we really and truly need to talk about and unpack. So what I have decided to do was I said I always wanted to do something with the men. I believe that it, it is important for us to hear men's voices um, because it's just so many of us women talking. And sometimes you got to hear men. So next week... Uh, we will have a friend of mine on a good podcast. His name is whose name is Matthew, and um, I'm going to open up and begin to have candid conversations with men, very similar to you know what took place tonight to hear the male um, side and the male aspect of you know doing time and finding lockdown love or not, right? Because you 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 can choose to or not to, um, and then next week we're going to take the conversation further. Um, because I just believe that it's important. And then we're going to build up to a men's panel. I'm still trying to figure it out, but I think that it is important for us as women to hear men's voices, right? What are they thinking? What are they feeling, uh, you know, concerning certain things, concerning certain situations, concerning relationships, concerning love, concerning all that thing, concerning things, children, all that stuff. I think that it is important that we begin to hear because sometimes 
we're so consumed with our own thoughts that we don't give the men the opportunity to actually speak their thoughts. And I know that for a fact, because I'll put up a post and be like, men only, here come y'all women. Well, I just want to say, it said men. Let the men speak. And what happens, most men, once they start seeing the women post and comment, they won't respond. They ain't going to respond at all. And and sometimes we need the male input. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Sometimes, So I want to uh, give the men the opportunity to speak. Because guess what? There are a lot of things we might not understand. I am a woman. Nine times out of ten, I'm emotional. I can be a little bit irrational based on my own thought and based on whatever's going on in my good life at the time. And at that moment of you telling me some dumb stuff that I feel is dumb, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest because I might feel this dumb. It might not be dumb to you, but it might be dumb to me. And, you know, so I believe that it is important for us to hear how do men think based on these individual men, male perspectives, right? Because we're not saying that these men can literally speak for the entire, uh, species of the male population, but they can give us insight based on their own experience and who they are. So I want to open that up and that's what I'm going to do next week. We're just going to work, but we're going to start off with one male and then hopefully the week after I'll be able to get this panel together and we'll begin to open it up with a panel um, because I just think that it is imperative that we talk to the men. I like talking to men. I don't know about y'all, but I like talking to men. I like getting different uh, uh, opinions from the good men folk. So I'm trying to pick men that will actually be, um, and I'm just being honest, I'm trying to pick men that will actually uh, be conversationalists and give you the conversation that you need. Um, not ones that are just give you like a one word answer and then you'd be sitting there like, so now I got to probe. I don't want to probe. I need you to like, you know, be forthcoming and forthright. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I want to, I want to plan. Um, it's not a bashing session, even when I do this with, with women, because afterwards I want to do it with women and then I want to bring back men and women at the same time and let us let us hash some things out. But it's not a bashing session because I do not believe in bashing men or women. I believe in upliftment. And I believe that if sometimes if we if we find a safe space to, in order to speak uh, what our issues are, what our differences are, um, it'll be much better for us. So that's all. I, I, I like to bring forth information. And that's what I'm going to do. So with that being said, I want to thank everybody for watching tonight. The Muzzle is Off podcast. If you are watching the replay, if you are just watching, if you are listening to the audio on Spotify, iHeart, um, Google, um, Apple, uh, and all the other ones that I can't quite remember right now. Um, thank you for uh, for listening um, those on YouTube, thank you for um, watching. And I just want you to, you know, continue to please like and share, continue to subscribe, continue to tell other people, um, because that's the only way how in which we're really going to build the platform. I mean, there, there are a lot of ideas that I have, but one of the things that I don't like to do is I don't like to waste money and I'm not going to continue to waste it. Um, without using wisdom, right? So everything that we do, we use wisdom. So I'm, I'm kind of holding back on certain things um, until I see that the viewership goes up and until I see that the subscribership goes up. So, you know, like I said, everything you got to do, you got to do it wisdom, right? So that's just what it is. So thank y'all. I thank everybody that is faithful to watching the Muzzle of Podcast. I thank everybody that is new to watching it. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, until next week, Wednesday. Wednesday, we'll be back at our regular time at 7 p.m. So until next week, Wednesday, I hope you all have a wonderful night and that you truly get rest. You know what I'm saying? We in the weekend, so truly get your rest. Thank you all. Have a good night. Bye.